Hello everyone, welcome to another create video. In a previous create video, I went over the basics of how to make trains and lay track. But I did not go over how to automate your train systems, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Now in create, we want to create logistical networks using our trains, i.e. transporting things or entities or items from one place to another and possibly back. And there's two ways we can handle this. We can either make a line where we move back and forth, or we can make a loop where we move in one singular direction. But in order to make these trains automatic, we have to build our trains in a very specific manner. The first thing to understand is when you're placing a train station, which is needed to have trains stop at a specific spot, when you're right-clicking the track or where you want to put it, it has an arrow. This means your station is one directional. With this arrow, your train can only approach the station from this side of the track. It cannot come from this side. This is important to note when we're making our two different types of networks. If we're making a singular line, you want your stations to be facing in opposite directions, like so. If you have a loop, you generally want to have your stations facing in the same direction on the line. But the important part is, how do we have the trains drive by themselves if no player is activating the controls? It's very simple. We need a conductor. So whenever you're building your train, you, to get a conductor you can do one of two things. You can either place a blaze burner block with a blaze in it on the train, or you can place a cushion on the train, and once it's assembled, you can put an entity on it. Like I have this ocelot friend here. Hello. The cushion and or the blaze burner should be right next to the train controls, as you see here. Another important thing to note about our trains is if you want a line where your train moves back and forth, you need two sets of controls on your train. Like our Ocelot Frontier has two controls within arm's reach. So that way he can reverse the train. But on our loop here, since we're always going in the same direction, we only have one set of controls. Once you have made the necessary modifications to your train, let's talk more about our stations. Whenever you place your station down, you have this button here. This button can rename the station. This will be very important because if you have multiple stations, they will all have the same name, just train station, and it will be hard to tell them apart. How do we get our train to automatically move there? The answer is very simple. A train schedule. Crafted by default with a sturdy sheet in a paper. Once again, remember, a mod pack might change this recipe. Always check the recipe in the mod pack. You will have a train schedule item. You can right click this and you'll be given a menu that looks like this. There's a lot of confusing things going on here, but let's take it one step at a time. In the bottom left, you have the loop forever button. If the light is on, that means the schedule will repeat itself after it finishes. So if you want a train constantly going back and forth, you want repeat forever on. In the middle here is our stations. Now when you first load up your train schedule, it will be empty like this. And it will have just a singular button. If you click this button, it will give you an instruction. You can tell it to travel to a station, update the schedule title, or limit the max speed. For most purposes, we're going to use travel to station. And then as you see here, it's awaiting an input. And it is awaiting the name of the station. This is why we have to specify the names of our stations. Now this station here is T1. And this station here is T2. So if I want my train to go to station T2, I'm going to give it a, the travel to station action with T2. So this instruction will tell my Blaze friend here to go to that station. And it will arrive at the station with the flag flipping up to know it has arrived. Now, 
let's say we want our friend here to head back to T1 after T2. But we want to specify when that occurs. For instance, when we fill up our cargo inventory. That's what this section here is for. I'm unsure why my tooltip is empty, but this is the wait condition. Once it gets to the station, it will await this condition before moving on. Basically, whatever we specify here has to be true in order for it to continue. By default, it will wait five seconds, which is just a static time. If I give this to our blaze, it will wait five seconds before moving to the next station. You can click on this to change the condition. So for schedule delay, you can change how long it is in either ticks, seconds, or minutes. Uh, obviously, the higher number, the more time it will take. The time of day, it will fulfill this condition whenever it gets to a specific time. The fluid cargo condition and the item cargo condition are checking how much cargo your train has. And the cargo is the items within chests on your train. It will check for either a reference item or a filter. So if I had cargo on my train, I could put a redstone dust in here. And it, this condition will be fulfilled when there is 10 pieces of redstone dust on the cargo of the train. You can change this to stacks. You can change the amount by typing in a number. Or you can change whether you're checking for if it has more than less than or exactly, so the same amount. And this is for both fluid and cargo. You can also use a redstone link, which is creates wireless redstone system. You can check if how many players are seated. If you're making a transport train, you can check cargo inactivity. What this is, is how much time passes when the cargo level in the train is not changing. If car the cargo doesn't change, meaning no new items or fluids are being added or taken off the train. After five seconds, it will fulfill this condition and leave the station. Whether the chunk is unloaded or not, because remember, in Create, Create will uh, still have trains work even if their chunks are not loaded. And whether the station is powered. So I'm going to select Station Powered for both of them. So my Blaze will not move on to the next station unless the station is powered. I'm going to give my Blaze the schedule. Now he is waiting because the condition is station powered. So if I give it a redstone signal, it will move on to the next station. And I can cause the same thing to happen over here. So that's how you get your trains to move automatically. But if they're moving automatically and there's more than one, there's always the chance for the train to collide with another train. So we need to talk train signals. Now, if you've played Factorio before, you know how sometimes frustrating train signals are. And they're similarly complicated in the Create mod. So let's talk about them. So let's say I have a section of track here. And when I have the train signal in my hand, you can see a yellow strip appears along the track. Tracks can be divided into sections using the train signal. And like, uh, like stations, you need to right click on the track first and then put the block down. So as you can see, I put a train signal right here, which is represented by this arrow. This is dividing the track into two sections. And the fundamental idea behind our train signal is if there is a train on the green section over here, it will not allow trains to automatically move from the yellow section into the green section. As you can see, there's a small red blip here, almost like a piece of redstone. Now that I have a train on the green section, the signal is red, meaning trains cannot pass from the yellow section onto the green section. This does not stop player-driven trains from moving from the yellow section onto the green section, only automatic trains. One more thing to note is if you look at the tile on the track, the train signal also is directional. So automatic trains will not pass from through the train signal in this direction. But if we need that to happen, you can put multiple signals attached to the same section of track. 
If I right click and then place another signal, the icon now updates to indicate trains can go in both directions. The part to note is now the yellow section is also protected by this signal as well. As you can see, a train is in the yellow section and the signal is red, indicating trains may not pass into the yellow section. If these indicators are hard to see, you can place a Nixie tube on top of the train signal and it will light up red if a train cannot enter or white if a train can enter. Let's look at an example to illustrate how these work. I have two stations here, station left and station right. These two stations produce resources, and I want to take them to my base at Station D, or Station Destination. But I have these two trains, and I don't want them to collide. So I'm using train, so I'm using train signals. If I hold my signal, you can see that the track is divided into three sections. This green section, and then each of the substations gets a yellow section to itself. The first thing I did is I put down stations facing in this direction. So I'm declaring that this green section of track is protected by these two signals. As you can see, there's a train in that section of track, so no new trains are allowed to enter the green section. But once it leaves, it turns white, allowing another train to enter. And the reason why I put the signals right here before the merge is because if I put a signal here, then the trains could get deadlocked. They would both be trying to go one this way and one this way. And no train would get anywhere. So I had to put them back here. Now, trains have to wait before entering the protected section of track before continuing. But also remember, if I want the trains to return over here, I have to put another signal telling them that they can go this way as well. So there's two more signals telling them that they can return to their home station. While these technically also are protected, it's not too noticeable because there's only one train ever entering these two areas. But if I put a train in this protection se protected section, this guy's going to roll up to this signal and he's going to stop because there is a train here. So if you player drive a train into this station, it will protect this guy from running into it. But this is highlighting another complexity with the train signals. We have a deadlock. This guy is sitting here at this station. This guy cannot enter his station because there's a train here protected by this signal. And because he's technically still on the green section of track, this signal is not letting this guy move forward deadlocking the whole system. Let's look at another example. So this way is a, this set intersection is a perpendicular intersection. Instead of merging onto the same track, we just have a hot zone where we don't want trains to crash. So we have to tell trains when they're allowed to move through the intersection. If I hold out my train signal, you can see that I've designated the part where the trains, the tracks intersect as the critical section. So what I have done is I've set up signals telling us if there's a train currently in the intersection, we cannot let another train into the intersection. But in order to get the trains out as well, I had to make signals going in reverse, which is what these elevated ones are. So in total, to make this setup work, I needed to use eight train signal blocks. So if I have one of my trains in the intersection, this guy cannot pass through because the signals are telling us that there's a train in the green section, meaning you're not allowed to go into the green section until our train clears the station. This way, our section of track here is protected and no trains will collide with each other. There is one common mistake though I see when you're making train networks. Let's say I want to protect this whole intersection. So I put signals like this. So now I have the green protected intersection. The only issue is, if you look at the directions, they're all heading into the intersection. 
meaning trains aren't allowed to pass through them in the opposite direction. So I naturally put signals going in the reverse direction. That should technically solve the issue. There's only one bigger issue now. All these sections of track loop in on each other. And these signals are now protecting this yellow section of track. Meaning if a train is on any of the yellow sections of track, it's going to prevent trains from leaving the intersection. So if I have a station here, our train could just be waiting at this station and another train could be wanting to go through here, but straight. It would successfully enter the intersection because there's no one in it. But this signal would be telling us that there's a train on this the next section of track because all of this yellow area is considered the next section of track. There's not really one way to fix this issue. It's kind of a, you have to think about your track in a big picture sense. The whole track has to be divided into these blocks and cannot be thought about individually. There's one more thing we should talk about. If you right click a signal with a wrench, you toggle it in chain mode. And this means that it will not just check the critical section that we've defined, but also the next section of track. Let's say I have a train sitting at this station here. And there's two trains that want to pass through this intersection. This train here, this train here is going to pass through it first. And as we can see, there's no trains in the intersection yet. So we're clear to enter it. But there's an issue. The next section of track is occupied by another train. So we're not allowed to enter it. So now we're sitting here in the intersection. If we have train signals here, we don't cause a collision, which is good. We'll just get stuck here. But if we don't have train signals for this line, then we're just going to crash right into this guy. Either way, it's not great, because even with the train signals, we'll get stuck here, causing another deadlock. So what to do? We can right click our signal with a wrench to enable chain mode. So it's going to be checking if this section of track is clear and the next section. As you can see, that section there is not clear by that signal. So this guy is not letting us enter either section of track now. So that way, even if there's a train at this station doing something, this guy is not going to block the intersection. And this guy here can make his way through. Also, one final note with your conductors. When trains collide, they may not break blocks, but they do still deal damage to the conductor if they're close enough to the point of collision. So please be very careful with your conductors. Thank you for watching this brief overview of how to automate your train networks. Naturally, it is still create, so even the most well-made explanations have nuance and could use further explanation. I'll do my best to continue answering questions about this, um, but there might also be others who can help you. There's also the create wiki for more information and the in-game ponder function. But I hope this gave you a good idea of how to automate your networks and how to ensure the safety of your networks using train signals. I hope you found this video useful, and I will see you later.